Okay. Okay. You know, I, I don't know how to feel about... Uh. So, the next generation iPad's gonna come in a box this big. But the display's bigger, so I... Okay, I don't, I don't. There are so many questions about the 10 and a half inch iPad. We don't even know if it's 10 and a half inches. That was just one person's theory. Other people said it could be from 10.1 to 11 inches. Okay, thinner bezels, right? Everyone's excited about thinner bezels. So wouldn't it make sense to bring that over to the iPad? But the reports earlier this year on that bezel-free iPad, which is probably still gonna have some form of bezels, were saying that they removed the home button and that's, that's causing me to not be able to sleep at night because I can't figure out what they're doing. So I thought it would be fun in a video to describe the best case scenario in the worst case scenario. I like to be optimistic. So let's start on the best case scenario, which I've kind of already talked about. It's my iPad Pro concept. I uploaded that video a while ago and that video showed you what my ideal iPad would be. So my dream scenario is that they got one sized bezel around the entire iPad, very thin, not quite as thin as it'll be on the iPhone 8, but thin enough to where you could embed the front facing camera in that bezel on the top. And of course, yes, this would mean a massive change to iOS because you'd be adding the on-screen home button for the first time because this iPad is rumored to come out at WWDC and it's already rumored that they have made 500,000 units of them already and by June we'll have 600,000 meaning they are ready to ship not too long after WWDC happens which that blows my mind because the iPhone 8's not even in that level of mass production but we know everything about that but when it comes to the iPad 500,000 are already made we still have no leaked images of it. <sighs> So confusing. Uh, anyway, one size bezel with a 10.9 inch display. And I know that you're thinking you need a place to hold your iPad. I think Apple is really good at palm rejection. That's why I'd be okay with this. It would have a glass back so it could sport wireless charging just like the iPhone 8 will. The new A10X chip, so it's a very powerful device. A true tone display, a redesigned Apple Pencil, and of course the on-screen home button would have embedded Touch ID. That is perfect. And they could even fit in a Taptic engine so that when you press this on-screen home button on the iPad, you get physical feedback just like you do on an iPhone 7. Also, when you add the Taptic Engine, that means this new iPad would have 3D Touch, which is awesome. I would love to see a dual camera, but that's a little out there. I don't think they'll do that, but I'm just saying best case scenario. And best case scenario, they'll also try to make this iPad for more professional use. They'll try to bring more pro apps to it. Apps like Final Cut, so that true video editors could actually replace their laptop with a tablet. I'd love to see USB-C brought to that, but I know that's unreasonable. Apple's not interested in that. But if they're able to pull all that off with this next generation iPad, I'm going to be very excited. That's going to be an iPad I'm going to buy as soon as possible and unbox for you and review. Because it would be light, it would have a great camera, that edged edge display would be a fresh new welcome design, it would make our old iPads look very outdated, and having that Taptic engine so that we could have an on-screen home button, it would just make it feel like we have the tablet of the future. But of course, even I don't think the best case scenario is actually going to happen, that's just me dreaming. Let's now talk about the worst case scenario, and this is the one I'm very afraid of because I feel like it is going to happen. To me, this would be the most boring thing Apple could do with the new iPad. So it was rumored to be 10 and a half inches, we'd get the exact same form factor of the 9.7 inch iPad, which just means bezels are there, they're just a little bit thinner than before, but we still have a chin and forehead. Just like before, and again, the bezels are still clearly there, just a lot smaller. And even though we have all this room on the bottom of the iPad called the chin, there will be no home button on it because they couldn't fit it. So then that's the main appeal of the new iPad is the fact that bezels are slightly thinner, and the reason there's no home button is because they didn't find a way to fit it on there. It's just not enough space. And then to make things worse, they wouldn't even have an on-screen home button. Apple would say, well, with an iPad, you have five finger gestures, which can let you go to the home screen. It can let you do multitasking with five or four fingers at once. So that's how you'll instead navigate through your iPad. And if you want to access Siri, you just have to say that magic term here. Sure, You have to just say it. There's no way to activate it just on the device itself, unless they're going to do something stupid like add a Siri app on your home screen. So where you have to open Siri, just like the Google Assistant. Oh, that'd be so counterintuitive. And on top of that, they would be removing Touch ID because they'd say, well, we don't know how to put Touch ID on the display yet. Which would mean now you have an iPad that's harder to use because you don't get those same old features where you just had a home button to go home or you could just click it twice to open up multitasking or you could just hold it to activate Siri. Now you have to say a term or use four fingers at once or five fingers to close, which still is not the most intuitive way to use an iPad in my opinion. I think Apple is genius how 
how they build their devices with a home button to remove it entirely and just assume that everyone gets how to do these gestures would be the worst case scenario possible. Also, they're going to drastically change the iPad operating system as we know it because we all know that on our iPhones right now to unlock your phone, you have to press the home button. That's just how iOS 10 works. You have your lock screen, you have your widgets, and to unlock it, you press home. So on the iPad, they'd have to do some weird other thing. Maybe they'd bring back slide to unlock, which would have to mean either removing the quick feature of opening the camera or removing the widget screen that we all like on iOS 10. It's just, I love the way things are so much right now. I'd love to see hardware adapt to that software, not have to push everything backwards in time. Now we'd remove that option of logging into iTunes, Amazon, our bank information with our fingerprint, which is really easy. You don't have to remember your password. All you got to do is rest your finger on the home button and you can log into stuff. Apple's just going to say, nah, you don't need all that. What you need is thinner bezels. And then the camera on the back won't be any better than the iPad Pro 9.7 inches right now. They'll still have a camera bulge, same old smart connector, no Apple Pencil refresh. You'll just use the same old Apple Pencil. And oh God, I'm so worried that's going to happen. There's just so little sense to that scenario. And yet all the reports are saying something like that will happen. And it pisses me off so much that that is a possibility. I'm going to have so little respect for Apple if that's the case. In fact, I would debate if it's even worth reviewing for this channel, even if it is an iPad redesign, which we haven't seen in a long time. We haven't even seen an iPad refresh in over a year. I don't think I would buy it because that's so dumb and there's no way I could enjoy that more than the iPad Pro I already have now, even with its inferior specs. I don't care if it has a true tone display. Apple, do something actually innovative with the new iPad. Do my best case scenario. If Apple did my iPad Pro 2 concept that I uploaded a while ago, there would be anger out there, but man, people would love that thing. It's such a drastic refresh to the iPad lineup and it would make it so much more practical. I don't even care if it's more expensive Apple. You know us Apple sheep don't care about that. I even said in that concept video that this iPad Pro 2 would cost like $1,500. Yeah, I know you're all upset about that. I know you all love tablets because they're so cheap, but look, if we want a massive refresh to the lineup, similar to what we wanted with the iPhone 8, it's going to come with a price bump. We all know that the iPhone 8 is gonna cost upwards of $1,000 and likely more if you want extra storage and stuff like that. I think it makes sense that in order to have a massive redesign for a premium iPad, we have to bump up the price a little bit in order to upgrade our iPad to feel more premium, we have to up the price a little bit so that those of us who really want a premium tablet will get it. We just have to pay a bit more. This iPad would line up perfectly with the iPhone 8 and if they actually just remove the home button entirely and don't provide a substitute, remove Touch ID, remove the quick access to Siri, I'll be so disappointed and I'll really question Apple's intentions with the iPad. It's like they are truly giving up on the tablet itself. I really hope that's not it. What do you think's gonna happen? Maybe the removing the home button thing was just a rumor and that's not actually gonna happen. I saw several reports saying that they are removing the chin at the bottom, but they're gonna keep the forehead so that we still have room for the front facing camera. And if you want to rest your hand somewhere while you're holding that tablet, you'll have at least one side. Maybe something like that would happen. Something in between my two scenarios. Just please, not the worst. Of course, let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.